say goodbye to uh, the Ponds, or the Williamses, or however you want to say it. Um, um, this is GPR, Galfrey Pirate Radio. I am your host, Davey Beauchamp. I am joined by... Angela Pritchett. And... Drew Meyer. And, yes, we are talking about Angels Take Manhattan. Um, worst title ever. <laughs> <laughs> there are worse titles out there. <coughs> there there have got to be. But... Um, this one's up there with them. With with the the severity of the episode, and I get it because they technically took. I mean, angels take over Manhattan, maybe. Yeah, um, angels control Manhattan. I'm in waiting to see 19- Angel and the Yankees hat or something though. That would be horrible. Yeah. So bad. Because it sounds like it should be a, a comedic episode instead of. It's a- kind of hard to hear that title and not think about the Muppets. Yeah. For those of us who are old enough to remember. Who yeah, because I mean, they probably didn't have that. Over in England. Love is Take Manhattan? Yeah. Well, the, the so-and-so takes Manhattan yeah. is, is a, a pretty popular news headline. Um, and, and I get it. I mean, it's, it's almost a, it is a pulpy kind of title. Yeah. And it is a pulpy kind of story. Yeah. Or film noir, technically, I yeah. guess. Sign noir. So, um, what did we think of this episode? We'll start with what we didn't like about it. Oh. <laughs> well, go. Okay, that's Central Liberty. Yes. Thank Statue you. of Liberty. Wow, way to take, you know. And I had I had probably mentioned this on one of our earlier episodes, thinking yeah. that that was going to happen. Yeah. Um, and I thought of a, a bunch of cool ways they could have done it. You know, mm-hmm. for instance, a city never sleeps. The lights are constantly on. Someone's always watching it. But what if the angels could turn off all the lights and no one could see, and then it moves? That's one thing. How they used it, how they implemented it, it they they took this idea and they went, hey, this is a great idea. It makes no sense for the story. It doesn't actually do anything with the story, and it it it's pretty dopey, actually. Yeah, um, I mean, they did explain why. Horribly green screen. I mean, they said that you know um, the angels had taken over every statue. Sure. So I mean, that's the only way I even bought that because uh, I mean, for one, statue of is made out of metal, not stone. Well, yeah, I know. I I have to agree. I just. I thought that was one of the weakest parts of the episode, and it did nothing for the story yeah. at all. I have to say, it is the weakest part of that episode. Mm-hmm. I have very few complaints about this episode yeah. in general. Um, it, that's definitely the biggest one. Is it? Is it? If you removed those scenes, and you can, you could probably edit it. You wouldn't affect the story in If you just any put an way. angel there, it would well, be creepier. Well, and if you look at it, the entire time the Statue of Liberty is sitting there, Doctor and River aren't even looking at it yet. The Statue of Liberty is just standing there doing nothing. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, they weren't even looking at it. They weren't even acknowledging it. They were having a little argument, but it was just, it was just frozen there, and that really bugged me. It, it was not. I mean, it should have zapped them. I mean, that's what it's supposed to do, but it just stood there doing nothing. Right. No, no, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I think everyone who who saw it all kind of went, oh, hey. Oh. <coughs> yeah. It doesn't take very long. Everyone goes, oh, what a great idea. Oh, no, that's really dumb. No, I, I mean, as soon as I saw it, I, I sent uh, Drew a text message saying, I hate you. Yeah, because um, cause he had predicted that. and I He was... also sent me one saying, I hate Drew. <laughs> yeah, because I was really, I mean, I was really hoping that they weren't going to do it. They weren't going to do I it. I was yeah. very confused. I thought you guys had gotten into a fight or something. Nah, not <laughs> no, another one. No, I mean, I, I really thought that was, yeah, a, a, weak, a weak point. And you know what makes it even worse? It's the only prediction I had about this episode that turned out to be right. <laughs> It's the only prediction that turned out yeah. to be right, and it was definitely the worst of my predictions. Yeah. So. so, what about you? The Statue of Liberty. Yeah. And the fact that the pawns left, but, yeah. Well, I mean, Doctor Who is about renewal, new things, I know, so I mean... But still... So, um, what did we like about this episode, before I get into some more, more questions that have been sort of in the back of my head about this episode? What did we like? Things I liked. Um, 
I, I like Doctor Who when he goes into a period piece. Mm -hmm. um, I liked the fact that the angels were brought back to the Blink Angels. Yeah. Which mm -hmm. I, I think worked out. But actually my favorite part of this episode was Mike McShane, who played um, Julius Grail. Mm. Um, because, um, as you know, but audience doesn't probably know, I, I do improv, and uh, Mike McShane... Uh, was on the original lineup of Whose Lines It Anyway back when Clive Anderson was oh, hosting it. Yeah. And he was also, of course, Friar Tuck in, in the um, American um, Robin Hood movie. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, and a couple other things. And he's, he's a great actor, but he's, he's an incredibly talented and funny guy. And he's essentially the first person you see in this episode, and I may have squealed when no. I saw him for the nice. first time. So, um, so I, that, that was definitely a high point for me. Creepy little baby angels. They scurried. The that cherubs. Made me so happy. They were like, and they scurried. It's like, oh my god, that's so creepy. Like out of the fact that I was just kind of like, oh, they're little babies, but then they made little like giggly noises. Uh, nothing is creepier than something that looks like a little kid making a little giggly noise. I, I like the justification for the cherubs in that the angels took over the statues, yeah. so it didn't matter what time, because, you know, we see the preview, you see the baby angels in a room, and I know I heard people going, can sleeping angels have babies? And, of course, it's just, you know, yeah. it just happened to be the con most convenient statue. I, thematically, I understand the need to giggle. Um, and I can see where that's creepy, but to me it just seemed kind of silly because it made it sound like these weeping angels. I mean, try to imagine. Imagine the weeping angels that we, we know from all previous episodes. Can you imagine if they just started laughing? Well, okay, I think, guess they did in the other one, but the giggling. Um, they were smiling, though. That was creepy. That was awesome. That was brilliant. All right, Davey, you haven't told us what you liked about it? Oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to wait. Okay. Um, so, um... Some, some, you know, I've been thinking about this episode. A lot of people think um, it was a very, very sad episode um, because they feel like Amy, Amy and Ray have a bad ending. But if you really look at it, they actually, you know, they got to live their lives all together. Sure. Um, do you agree with that, that, that they had a bad ending, that it was a very, very sad ending, and because they didn't get to live out in the present, but ended up in the past. No, I think they had a good ending because one, they got to live out their lives together. Yeah. Two, River has to see them again to give her the book. I'm a little confused about the book. Who actually wrote the book? Um, the doctor said River wrote the book. But she gives it to Amy, Amy who Amy's writes it up and it gets published that yeah. way. Gotcha. And actually, the um, interesting thing about the book, they did release they did. Angel Seek My Head and it actually crashed um, all the sites for a couple of hours with people trying to get it. Mm -hmm. It took me a while, but I finally got a copy. Um, I haven't read it yet, um, but I, I, I can't. It's already arrived. Yeah, it, it's it's, a, it's only as a ebook. Digital. Oh. Yeah, it's gotcha. the first time they're doing this, mm -hmm. uh, and with as well as it sold, it's probably not going to be the last. That's smart. Uh, Very smart. Which means we might eventually get a uh, reverse diary like that. Is my guess. I hope not. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> Then, then all of that becomes canonical and you can't go back and tweak it. Um, but I think for their ending for this, it's a lot better than separating them and having them have to live their lives out separately. Yeah, no, I agree. It's certain, the, the, the way it ended, it's definitely better for Rory and Amy. Yeah. Brian got a little short-shafted, but that's, yeah. you know, eh. But there were, if you went on, um, if you went on a lot of the image sites afterwards, people were doing sketches of, like, these sad things of, the, of um, Brian looking down at the um, tombstone and mm -hmm. the doctor telling him what happened, and it's yeah. just like heartbreaking. Well, Brian's just an amazing <coughs> character. Heck, I think he's the best thing that has come out of season seven was Brian, and it's, mm -hmm. it's I, I mean, I know if Chris Chibnall had his way, we'd probably see Brian again, but I imagine that we'd probably have said goodbye to Brian as well. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing that really bothers me is the doctor says that he can't go back to New York 1938. Yeah, or whatever that is. You know what? But the thing is, he didn't say anywhere. He could go anywhere else. He could easily go somewhere else, get them, or. But see, then that means he has to ride the boat from Jersey, and who wants to go to Jersey? Which is a valid point, admittedly. Um, the only um, state you have to pay to get out of. Um, <laughs> um, I'm not even gonna comment <laughs> that because actually, most of my family is from Jersey. You don't. Know, that's disgusting. Anyway. 
Um, but no, and also the Vortex Manipulator has, has no issues going back to that time period, especially if River does get to go back. I mean, uh, they, they let themselves an out. If they ever do want to get, get these characters back, they can do it. Yeah, I have a, again, biggest problem, Slash yeah. Rue Liberty. Second biggest problem, the slow motion run um, on the bridge and the, the idea that that picnic basket could stay in Central Park for more than a couple hours without someone yeah. walking off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Third problem is just the logistics of time travel. Yeah. And it's a problem. I mean, it's not a problem because we all go in here. Any real fan of Doctor Who is going to go into us and watching with a suspension, a willing suspension yeah. of disbelief to go, okay, time travel is possible except for when they say it's not. How do you know? If the doctor says it's not possible, it's not possible until he he changes that yeah. fact. And you just kind of have to go, okay, obviously the doctor would go back if he could, but he can't. Of course he could just go somewhere else and walk over. Yeah, exactly. Um, Take Betsy. Unless, unless, <laughs> unless um, it's saying that because that point in time is a fixed point now in which he was a part of that fixed point, he is physically going there, regardless of how he gets there, Vortex Manipulator, TARDIS, Bessie, the car, whatever it is, would destroy, what, New York? All time and space? It, it keeps on changing. We would burn out the sun. We'd burn out the planet. We'd burn out New York. We'd, you know, we'd yeah, burn out Yeah, but I mean, the, the fact that we know River ends up going back at least one more time to see them. Unless she sends it, does does the, the, the that classic um, Back to the Future 3, we, we post it at a mailbox and they'll bring it to you uh, when they get there. I hope hey, that. that was fun. It's been no, that, that was smart. I mean, that yeah. was really, really smart, but I mean, it, it's been done. Sure. But no, I just, I, I think they left themselves a loophole. If they ever did want to get them back, they could. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they left a huge loophole there. Because uh, I did make a point of New York City, they couldn't do it too. But, you know... And the Vortex Manipulator had no problem getting through to this point. I mean, they lived themselves a few different ways to go back if they want to revisit them at any point. They also are really pushing the Vortex Manipulator toy that, that yeah. came out right after the same time. I just saw that, yeah. So, you know, um, which is going to look like a big leather bracelet until you actually show somebody and then it's going to... It's not even going to look like a leather bracelet. That's, like, that's going to look... That's a convention toy. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, you know, it's... They left themselves, they left themselves some out. So, um, did anybody cry? Um, oh my goodness! At the end, not, not just a bit at of it. Not, not, I I was crying just depending on what little things. Like the second he rips out the page from the book, I was like, oh, my chest it hurts. There were just little things about the episode that just made me the whole time go, oh, I know it's coming, I know it's coming, but how is it coming? I I gotta say, I I, I did I did shed a few tears. And I thought that, um, I can't remember who told me this. It might have been you that said this. That you find, or, or it might have been one of the Baines that said they finally believed that Amy was in love with Rory. Yeah, that was um, Teresa, I know, in our conversation about it. When, you know, I was, I was impressed by Amy um, wanting to jump with Rory. That was, that was pretty intense. Even though the CG was horrible on it, it was, it was very touching. Um, I thought it was a very touching moment, um, and, but and I, and I have to say, when Rory looks down at his tombstone and then vanishes, and then there's just the, the angel there, I thought that was a brilliant little, yeah, a brilliant little, um, just the way they they shot the scene, scene. I really was really impressed, and then Amy just with her whole thing, like, if it, if, if, if it touches me, will I go back? Will I go back to where he's at? I mean that was the that I mean that's the ultimate thing of you know who is she who is she choosing mm -hmm. is she choosing to be you know Amelia Pond or you know Amy mm -hmm. Williams um, and then of course I got to say I think the thing that really got me to tear up was uh, the the Amelia Pond scene at the very very end mm -hmm. um, and seeing the TARDIS and hearing it but then again of course the, the, there once again he's changing the timeline. By telling this little girl all of her wonderful adventures she's gonna have with them when she grows up. Yeah. Um, when <coughs> Matt Smith first leaked the idea that there was going to be a scene from yeah. the first episode, 
uh, I don't remember which website put it up, they did a really good scan of um, the eleventh hour. Yeah. And they said these are the possible scenes he could have been talking yeah. about. And I went back and I watched it, and uh, I figured it was yeah. that scene. And I was just like, oh, that. Because we hear the TARDIS rematerializing in the very last scene in the eleventh hour. Yeah. With Amelia Pond there. So. Yeah. No, that was that was good. I you know. I uh, I. I'll admit freely that in episode two, with the dinosaurs on a spaceship, mm -hmm. when. Brian was hanging out of the ship looking at the Earth. I cried then because it made yeah. me realize what a great experience it is to have something like Doctor Who and to be a part of that life. And I think that was my my tear for the season. Mm -hmm. I think the problem I had with Amy and Rory disappearing is we knew it was going to be the last one. Yeah. We were set up for it. I, you know, you or at least the fans should, were. Right. I, I think what's going to happen is I think people who discover Doctor Who later are really going to appreciate that episode a lot more yeah. because they're going to come at it in the same way that, say, I came at season two of the new series with the, the, the leaving of um, Rose. Because, mm -hmm. you know, at the time, I didn't have a television. I didn't really didn't know yeah. how the internet worked. So I, you know, got Doctor Who on DVD. I got both seasons yeah. and watched them all in, like, two or three days yeah. and had no clue that, one... We were going to get a new doctor at the end of season one, See, and no, two, uh, no clue that um, Rose was going to leave. So both of those yeah. became like fresh. Yeah, and got the experience that we were supposed to have. Because I'll tell you, when when they, when they did the opposite thing, I was shocked because I knew he was signed on for four seasons. I mean, I knew that he was going to be the doctor for a little while. So when that regeneration hit, my jaw on the floor. Because I mean, back then you really didn't look for spoilers about Doctor Who because you know. Who knows if it was going to have another season? I, I, exactly, but when when they did that, my jaw on ground. I was excited, ec ecstatic. Um, I was a little put off that you know they were doing the Highlander regeneration, but you know, um, I was I was so happy. So um, this brings us to some some interesting things. Um, did they leave any like plot holes that they never filled with with them leaving? I mean, one thing I can think of is. One question that's never been answered is why was there a picture of the burning house in the eleventh hour? You know, I went back and looked. I couldn't find the burning house. I'll show it to you. Yeah. Um, but there are little things like that that you know that you know we still don't know who built the TARDIS, but Amy and Roy aren't part of that. Mm -hmm. If you really look at it, but there was that that thing with the burning house that's always bugged me. I mean, that's such a specific image. I wonder if it's something that Moffat decided to drop, or you know, because I really don't think we're going to answer to that to that now. Well, I still felt, you know, I, I think we had talked about, I had some really, really bizarre ideas on, on what was going to happen with Amy and Rory, and uh, I cited definitely um, Cold Blood and Hungry Earth um, with the scene where Amy and Rory are waving to themselves, yeah. and they never answered that. But again, timey-wimey. Yeah. Um, well, I actually, one thing I did right away after I knew what time period in which they, they were left, I actually checked to see what time um, uh, Amelia... Um, Rumsford? Rumsford, what episode she was in, what, what year was in, and how old she was. Mm -hmm. It doesn't match up. No, of course it's not going to match uh, up. I really good. hoped. It was yeah. awesome. It, yeah, well, um, you have let me borrow Shada. That's why yeah. I'm listening to Shada, and Shada's brilliant. Shada, of course, for those who don't know, is um, the unfinished, unfilmed, uh, unfinished filming uh, Douglas Adams script from way back when yeah. uh, with Tom Baker. And it's been rewritten into an audiobook form. And one of the things that I, I used to really like, but I almost feel like they're overdoing with shot is, is what I'm hearing termed in the name fan wank, mm -hmm. where it's, they're going back and they're throwing tons and tons of fans that only fans will appreciate. Yeah. And I think that with Amy and Rory being the first companions that so many new viewers of Doctor yeah. Who came in, they couldn't have done that. I would have loved to have seen that. It would have, as a fan, yeah. that would have been great for me, but I, I don't know. So were there any were there anything any questions left to answer that um, you, you felt that they didn't they didn't answer with Amy and Rory that were there? Not that I can really think of right now. I liked how they ended it with if if we didn't know that the Christmas special was next, that they could have filled it in with some episodes of River, which would have made me very happy. Well, see, I mean, I was really hoping that we'd get an episode or two with the Doctor just traveling by himself. Um, but of course, we're not going to. We're going straight into the um, the Christmas episode. So, I do want to talk a little bit about the three shot trailer. 
Um, I'm getting my Victorian England Christmas special again. Yay! I'm so excited. <laughs> um, so what do we think about those? just those three shots? Coleman looks freaking awesome in that outfit. Coleman looks freaking awesome. Period. Um, yes. So it's the Doctor, it's JLC, and is that Richard E. Grant? I think so. Yeah. It's a, I haven't. I looked at it. Um, I mean, there's nothing there. There's nothing there. I but mean, we know it's at least the Victorian <coughs> one. Because originally we were trying to figure out if that was the Christmas special or a later episode. Right. And we right. do know that it is the Christmas special now. No, I think I think there might be another Victorian episode. Because the only thing, only pictures I had seen were her in that green outfit, Victorian wise. I don't know. I because so. my thing is, is is she a time traveler? Is she an alien? I mean, what's going to be the point? I mean, because the thing is, both both those characters supposedly have the same last name. Last names don't travel down the female line. It's the male line, so I mean. Maybe she's well. Some some old Irish, those old Irish traditions where they they took the woman's name. My wife didn't change her name. There we go. Yeah, but I mean, we're looking at you know, sure, Victorian all the way through, near future. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, yeah, I'm, I'm just saying. Maybe, A civilization dominated by women. Well, that's quiet. No, I'm, I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to think if. <laughs> They did one of those episodes, but they didn't. I know there was an unfinished script for the second Doctor in which basically they were on an Amazon warship. Yeah. And uh, it, <coughs> I, I seem to recall uh, Fraser Hines lamenting that that, uh, that episode never got filmed. Um, um, so yeah, I mean, there's really not much. I mean, do you think we're going to get a full trailer before um, Christmas? Oh, we'll get a full yeah, trailer. Yeah, we'll get something. That, Doctor Who is apparently the number one television show pretty much on the planet right now. Um, I don't remember what the... There's a big conference that happens um, yeah. in the BBC, and they talk about it, but it's also ITV and Channel yeah. 4 and all of those. And apparently on the cover of the book was Doctor Who. So yeah. um, they understand that Doctor Who is, for the first time in many 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 years what a what a franchise and what a merch yeah we could very well see well i don't want to be too optimistic and say another 26 you know 26 seasons of the the current doctor who maybe possibly though oh i had a horrible thought not horrible weird all right the original doctor who ran from 63 to 89 yeah right 26 years worth yeah it's not kind of hard to imagine so imagine it this way the Simpsons are only on their 24th season. Yeah. So the only thing that we can relate to show-wise is like The Simpsons. It's kind of crazy to think that it's always on. And I haven't kept up, kept up with The Simpsons right, yeah. at all. So I, I can see why people are like, well, yeah, I used to watch it as a kid. Um, we'll see a trailer. I watched it as a kid, so. We will see it. We'll see a trailer. Well, of course. I mean, they always do. Actually, um, I think mid-October, mid we should start seeing their some of their Christmas adverts. Because I know the BBC loves our Christmas adverts, and they always put Doctor Who in all the Christmas adverts. Yes. Um, so, yeah. Um, is there anything else we want to say about this episode? Didn't like the slow motion run at the end. <laughs> um, River Song, fantastic as ever. Yes. Um, very, you know, actually, I would like to talk about it, because obviously the Doctor has been traveling a lot, and that's mm -hmm. one of the things that this season has really told us, is the Doctor has been traveling by himself. Yeah. So that's a, that's a big stretch. Um, <coughs> but one of the things that he definitely did in this episode is there was some definite and genuine affection for River. Like, yeah, way more than we have seen ever previous to. And of course, he is yeah. moving further along his timeline, and she's moving yeah. in the opposite direction. I don't know where we are in River's timeline with the Vortex Honestly, I hate to say it, I think we're... With, with the affection shown, I think we're at the end. Yeah. Um, I, I see us maybe during the 50th anniversary or during the, the, the season, um, that, that, that the, the anniversary season, I could see us getting the scene where, right. he, where he gives her the screwdriver. Which means his screwdriver's got to change, or is he giving her her own screwdriver? No, no, he gives her uh, the tenant screwdriver. Remember the altered tenant screwdriver? Is it an altered tenant? It's an altered tenant screwdriver. Oh, I've held that screwdriver and it didn't look like tenants. Yeah, but... it's tenants. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Well, I was just we touched with the, the um, sincerity of emotion, yeah. which I thought was very sweet. Um, I, I liked the regeneration energy thing. Um, I, I know that the, um, 
there are some haters for the, the use of regeneration energy to do things, but I think most of those haters come from the end of time where you can use your regeneration energy to fly and shoot lightning bolts. Yeah. And again, in all things, everything but the last 15 minutes of end of time should be ignored. I mean, it, it should be just gone. Uh, but that being said, no, I think, you know, it was a good episode. It wasn't a great episode. It certainly was not my favorite of the season. Um, well, so, well, uh, okay, so what would you consider your favorite episode of the season? From start to finish, um, as long as, it's a horrible thing to say, but as long as I don't think about it too much, dinosaurs on a spaceship, um, because there are some very weird, dark moments that mm -hmm. I find make me doubt the, the entirety of that episode, I think I liked that one the best because it was a fun... It, 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 I think of all the episodes of Doctor Who showed you what Doctor Who could be. Yeah. I think if I had to show any one of those four episodes to a new Doctor Who, yeah. that would be the episode. What about you? What's your favorite of, of, of the five so far? <laughs> Interesting. Well, we know why you I like can, dinosaurs. Well, I, can, I can sit here and like name out my favorite, like from most favorite to least favorite. So. Of the season? Yeah. Oh, let's hear it. Do it. Okay, well, dinosaurs, yeah. power three, mm -hmm. angels, and then it's kind of like a half and half between Mercy and Asylum. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't really, I liked all of them, but I can't really figure, like, those two were the ones that I was kind of... Oh, yeah, and don't, don't get me wrong. When I say I like certain ones less, it's still, you know, bad yeah. Doctor Who is better than any good anything else for the most part. So, and so. I, didn't, I didn't dislike them, but they yeah. were just the ones later. I still haven't that... gotten a chance to see Town Called Mercy again. So I've only seen it the one time. So I'm still, there's kind of this bad taste in my mouth from that. But I, I, I do want to watch it again, so I can see what I think. So do you have anything left you want to say about this episode? Yeah, no. Cool. Um, I'm pretty done. Um, I avoided most of the questions. Um, so this is uh, GPR signing off. Peace. Let's go. What about it all on tonight? It's hard to find you. What about it?